Hi, this is Yoram. Today I'm going to show you how to eliminate echo, you know, the annoying echo that sometimes you get during a Zoom call or any other video call. Let me say this again, how we eliminate the echo. Actually, the echo now was an effect that I added to OBS, which I'm sure I'm going to cover in another video. If you like these videos, just subscribe to my channel so you'll know when I uh, send another one. This is in my uh, video uh, playlist called uh, Tech Tips for Speakers. You can actually get there directly by techtipsforspeakers.com. And one more thing, if there's anything specific that you want me to cover, just post something in the comments and you will notice that I read every comment and I respond to every comment with a question. So if you have any question, anything that you would like me to cover in another video, just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best, uh, especially if it's something that I know how to do. Okay, first of all, why do we have echo? When, you, we, when we communicate over video, there are two elements of audio. One is there is a microphone. The microphone is supposed to pick up our voice send it to the computer through the software over to the cloud and to the person on the other side or the people on the other side. Then we have speakers and the speakers let us hear what people on the other sides with their microphones uh, sound like and what do they say. Well, that's all great except that the speakers, the way you hear somebody else, can come back through the microphone that you have here. So another person is speaking it comes out through your speakers and back through your microphone to the other side. And now we're starting to get echo because everybody can hear that other person and the echo coming from your computer. So pay attention to one thing. If you're the person who's causing the echo, you're not going to know it. Why? Because you are transmitting one of those repetitions or the repetition of the other person. The other person is going to hear it because they're going to hear you coming in, except that they're going to hear their own voice and everybody else is going to hear it. So uh, there is a piece of software that's built into Zoom and other software that's called echo cancellation. It's digital signal processing. And what it does is it says, look, I know what's coming in through my, uh, I, I know what's coming out through the speakers and I know that part of it is going to come back through the microphone. And so I'm going to try and correlate and kind of cancel it. And for the most part, it works. It doesn't work all the time. One reason would be the amount of delay that my processing delay that might happen in your computer and other reasons. Maybe the uh, speakers are just too loud or the microphone is too sensitive and even echo cancellation software cannot eliminate that. And I'm not suggesting special software, it's just part of Zoom. So uh, what do you do about it? How do you eliminate that echo? Well, one thing is obviously mute everyone. Whoever is not speaking, just mute yourself, which is great if this is a webinar, this is a one-way I speak, you listen type event. Uh, but if a lot of people have to speak, that's not good enough and it's going to be a little hard for everybody to mute themselves. By the way, here's a little tip. If you are muted and your active window is Zoom, holding the, the uh, space button, the long space key on your keyboard would momentarily open your mic and when you release it, it would stop. It's just like the push to talk button in, in radios. So your space key operates like that. So you can say, everybody mute yourselves. I'm going to hold, whoever is going to speak, just hold the space button when you speak, not just once, hold it as long as you speak and release it just like a push to talk. That would be one thing. By the way, if you get echo, how do you know where the echo is coming from? Well, what Zoom does is it helps you a little by putting either a, green, a yellow box around the person who's speaking or the second person who's speaking will get just a little yellow bar underneath their image which takes about one third of the lower line of that image. So you're going to start seeing that either you're speaking and somebody else either turns into a, uh, you see a yellow frame uh, or, or box around them or a yellow bar below them. And you will know that not only you're speaking, but they're coming through as well. 
Uh, if you're not the person who's speaking, but you will see two other people, you're going to hear the echo and you're going to see two other people with either the yellow box or bar. One of them is the person who's speaking. The other one is the person who is providing the echo. So once you know who's the, I mean, you know who's speaking and you, you see that another person has this yellow bar or box, tell that other person to mute themselves. So now you only muted one person. What else can we do? Uh, reduce the volume on your speaker. Uh, remember, echo cancellation software will be able to handle some echo, maybe not too much. So if you reduce the volume on the speakers, you may be eliminating it. I mean, the microphone is far enough away. Uh, the other thing is physically separate where the speakers are and where the microphone is. Uh, when, what microphone do you use? Uh, I use a Blue Yeti and Blue Yeti has several and, and other microphones as well that are used for uh, podcasting and, and things like that. Uh, they have different patterns and patterns means that th the microphone itself actually has multiple microphones in and has some digital processing inside and it says these are the microphones I want to amplify, these are the microphones I want to eliminate. And one of the, uh, typically when, when you uh, do a, a podcast or, or record something, you would want to use a pattern called a cardioid. And what it is, is it picks up the sound right in front of it, coming from me, not so much from the sides, not so much from the back. And if the mic, your speaker is in the back or on the side, your microphone is less likely to pick up something from the speakers. Uh, you may use a shotgun microphone. Shotgun microphones typically are kind of long and they're aimed they're pointing at exactly where you aim them, as opposed to a cardioid microphone, which you would typically hold like this and speak to, a shotgun microphone is going to be pointing at you. And uh, again, a shotgun microphone picks up the most where it's pointing at, not so much on the sides. Speaker is on the side, then the shotgun microphone is not going to uh, pick it up. Another possibility is to actually use a headset or a headphone. So you can use a big headphone like this. And uh, you know, the, the probability that your microphone is going to pick up something that's coming from the headphone is much lower. You can use a small uh, headphone uh, headset, just like you know what Apple uh, used to have. And I say used to have, it's because you would typically need to have a 3.5 millimeter jack to plug it into your computer. Uh, of course, you can have AirPods or something like this. This does not have to be an Apple product. And then through Bluetooth, connect that to your computer. The only thing is that when you wear something like this, then uh, first of all, you have to put it on the right ear. Then people would see that and it's really up to you. If it's not a big deal, then it's not a big deal. If it is a big deal, then maybe that's not the way to go. The last uh, thing that I would uh, suggest is what I typically do. And what I typically do is I use something that's called an IFB headset. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. An IFB headset looks like this. Okay, there is this area here, by the way, has no wires inside. It's just a tube that goes into your ear. You can see that it's transparent, so it doesn't show up very well. Then this, this is really the speaker in it. And so it sends sound into this tube and then the rest is electronics and it has a 3.5 millimeter jack. Down below in the description of this video, I will post links to uh, pretty much everything that, uh, every device that I'm talking about. Uh, there is something that will allow you to attach this to the back of your shirt so it doesn't show. So really everything needs to be behind you. And then the IFB headset would just come in like this. And you can see that nobody really can see that you have that. Unlike your, uh, unlike your, your headset, your even uh, your AirPod. See, you can see the AirPod, not so much the um, uh, not so much the IFB headset. Now, uh, how much does an IFB headset cost? 
I'm sure that if you look uh, hard, we can find one for $150. We can find one for maybe $200. I'm going to post a link to something from my favorite show, uh, my favorite store uh, called b and uh, Camera or b and Photography in New York. This is like, if you like photography and, or audio or something, this is like Disneyland. Uh, and it's in New York City. And by the way, since they only have one facility, uh, they ship uh, with uh, no tax because it's it's sold over the internet to another state. That is, if you are at another state. Anyway, the headset, the IFB headset that I have here is not something that I got at uh, B&H. It's not something that cost me $75. It's something that I, I paid just under $10 for. In fact, I found it now for $8.95 from Amazon. Is it the same quality as a $75 one? Probably not. But here's the thing. This is not the quality by which other people will hear you. This is the quality by which you will hear other people. And so when you put that in your ear, you will have to, um, uh, you, you will have to be okay with the quality. I'll tell you something, a $9 quality is good enough. Now, one more thing, keep in mind that when you're in a Zoom call, you're used to select the camera that you're going to be using. You're used to select the microphone you're going to be using. When you open microphone, you also have the ability to select the speaker through which you're coming. And so putting an IFB headset and plugging it into your computer is not going to be enough. You have to go through the step of just like with the same button, uh, the same arrow that in Zoom allowed you to select the microphone, you will have to also select the headset that you're going to hear and eliminate the speakers that way. When the headset is here, microphone is not going to pick it up. And when I deliver a keynote, a workshop or something like this, this is typically what I wear and I got used to wearing it. This is how you eliminate echo. If you have any other ideas, post it in the comments before below. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. And again, I'm shooting those videos for you. If there's any other area that you feel you want me to cover, and as long as I know it, post it in the comments below. You will notice that I respond to comments and fairly quickly and fairly in detail. I hope this was helpful. Enjoy it. Be good. Be safe. If this video was helpful to you, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you will get notified whenever I release another video like this, because I do it about once a week. Also, go ahead and check my Tech Tips for Speakers playlist so you'll see the videos that I already have recorded. And may trust be with you.